All right. Good morning. Good after. Whoops. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, everybody. So, we are now into phase 1.0. So let's talk about what phase 1.0 is. So, what phase 1.0 is is it is our base building for hockey. All right. So what we're trying to do is. We're trying to build up everything to a point where it is a workable standard within underwater hockey. So let's talk about this a little bit more. So what we're going to be seeing during phase 1.0 is we're going to be seeing a lot more cardio. What the cardio is going to do is the cardio is going to help up your base volume that your body can actually hold of what we're doing. So a simple example would be if you guys go to a training camp. And that training camp is three hours in the pool, two days in a row, and you're not particularly, your body's not trained for that. Guess what? You're not going to be able to handle three hours in the pool, and your body's going to shut down, and we're not going to be able to work with you the way that we want to. So, the whole point of this particular section and growth for us is to get us to a workable standard. All right. The end goal right now is nationals, which is a few months out. Once we get a little bit closer, we're going to move into phase 2.0. But during phase 1.0, let's talk about some things we're going to start building. So first things first is we're going to start building good habits. All right. So um, with that, when you first workout, you're going to start seeing is going to be the weekly reset. This is awesome. So what the re weekly reset is, is this particular workout is designed to just get our blood flow going, get our nervous system turned on. Because one of the worst things to do is when you come out of a rest day and you don't have anything under your belt and you feel really, really flat. So it's hard to do big workouts because you don't have anything behind it. You haven't gotten your juice running. You haven't gotten anything beside that. So that's what we're doing with this particular workout. This is going to be a staple workout. It is not going to be an overly hard workout, but it will be something that you're going to kind of push a little bit on. All right. So let's talk about it a little bit more. Five minute dynamic warm up. All right. This is just getting loose, getting free, moving on to new things. Do what you need to do to stretch, get loose. In particular, at the start of the week, what I want to be seeing out of everybody is working on those problem spots. We've all had enough time now that we've did, that we know which what works for us and what doesn't work for us. So this is your time to do it inside of the dynamic workout. So me, in particular, I've had a herniated disc in my back. So one thing I really like to make sure of before I go is make sure my hip flexors are so, so loose so that my back isn't being pulled down and pushed into that herniation. Um, and that varies from person to person. So really focus on what you need. Then we got 10 minutes easy effort jump rope. This is just chilling, relaxing, catching our breath, um, or not really catching our breath, but not out of breath at the same time. You're just moving. It should be about conversation pace. Two-minute recovery, five by five minutes. This is a healthy one. Seven out of ten effort on the jump rope with one-minute recovery. So five minutes of boom, 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 boom. And here's what I want out of this in particular. I want you a seven out of ten, which means you're getting about – three to five words out before you got to take a breath. So, oh man, this jump rope is kind of rough today. That's just about the tempo that I want breathing wise if you're not tracking your heart rate at this point. You're going to do that five by five times with a one minute recovery, two minute recovery on the other side, 10 minute cool down. Here's what that cool down's for. That cool down's for working out some kinks that you may have. So, um, stretching any particular problem areas if you feel like you didn't get enough during that five minute those five minute intervals go ahead do a little bit more there try to get get a little more blood flow but again we are not trying to tax our body during this one we are just trying to get everything turned on this is going to be a weekly staple you guys are going to start to see this every monday and we're going to start to build on it and start adding on top of workouts on top of that so that we can start to build out our cardio a lot more um Next, well, let's talk about the strength that we're going to start to see inside of here. So you're going to see several strength workouts coming in, and strength workouts are going to be added in and growing. The fundamentals with this is form over function, form over function. So what I mean by that is I want to see great form, not as much weight. We will get heavy. We will get strong later on. Right now is a really good time to focus on your form 
dial in absolutely everything and start slowly building up those weights. We're going to have an opportunity to get real big and real strong and it's coming later on. But if you don't have the healthy foundation for that, then it's not going to work. So if you picture your fitness as a pyramid, all right, I wish I could fit that in the camera. But if you do I have a pen, I don't bummer. Okay. If you picture your fitness as a pyramid, the bottom is your foundation. This is your stretching. This is your cardio. This is your strength. This is your um, basic tendon strength. All your simple things are going to fall into this, and we'll get into that um, more later on. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to build out the really fat bottom part of the pyramid. If we don't have a fat part of the pyramid, then we're not very stable building up. So if I just do hard workouts, guess what? I'm going to topple over because I don't have a very functional base. So I need to do that base work. A good reference for this for hockey is your fundamental stick, st stick work, your fundamental passing drills. If you can't pass and you can't hold on to the puck, then nobody wants to be on your team. And this is the same idea. If you can't keep up with the fitness behind everything, then people aren't going to want to play with you. But Luckily for you, you have me, and we want to play with you. So let's get into this a little bit more. Strength, what are we going to start to see? We're going to see a lot of compound movements, all right? A lot of compound strength movements. What a compound movement is, is a compound movement is when you're moving multiple joints in your body. This is functional strength. This is stuff that's going to translate into the pool very well. The functional strength portion of it, if we just go into strength 1.4, pull-ups. This is a compound movement. We have to engage our back. We have to pull everything down and tight. We have to engage our legs so we're not actually swinging. We have to keep our arms engaged the whole time. So a lot of compound movements throughout these things. A um, simple movement, if you just look at your arm like this, is me moving my wrist. That's a simple movement. A compound movement would be if I push forward. I'm using both my shoulder muscles and my elbow muscles throughout that. That's a, that's a simple explanation of those two. So as you guys are working through this, these compound movements, we need to focus on the movement itself as opposed to the weight. There's going to be an opportunity to get lev heavy, and what we're going to try not to do right now is we're going to try not to get injured. As we build all this stuff up, our body will become more and more injury resistant. And the more injury resistant it is, the more load you can put on your body. So again, that is one of the bigger, bigger overall themes of um, phase 1.0. Okay, let's talk about strength a little bit more. We got squats. We're going to see a lot of squats. We're going to see a lot of leg strength. In particular, we're going to see sumo squats coming up a lot more. Reason for that. One thing we want to build in hockey players is our hip flexors. That's where a lot of our power comes from, especially in our kicks. So if we're kicking through a pool, a lot of your power is going to come from your hip flexors. So you're going to see a lot of movements that are going to help strengthen our hips and get everything nice and strong, all right? And that's going to be a common theme throughout strength is hips throughout a lot of things. One thing that swimmers do is they don't have very strong hips because they really only work in one plane. So the stronger we get these, the better off we're going to be. Now, uh, let's break down this cardio a little bit more. You guys are also going to start seeing this active recovery day. Here's why we do active recovery days. The reason we do an active recovery day is because what happens is after we work out a little bit, gunk is left over in your body people say it's lactic acid that's not true lactic acid gets shuttled out of your body in about two to three hours but with that there's a lot of other byproducts there's hydrogen there's calcium there's uh, the list goes on and on but with that that's all what's left over in your muscles so we do active recovery days so that we don't put strain on our body but we get our blood flow up and we clean all of that mess absolutely out of there all right so in particular, what's going to happen on these days is you're going to do about an hour, 45 minutes of light efforts. I'd say 60%. should never be above conversation pace or below conversation pace, my bad. It should never be faster than, all right, we're cool, we're chilling. Your heart rate's going to get up a little bit, but I do not want to see this as a workout or a strain on anybody, all right? Uh, what can we do on active recovery days? We can do yoga, pickleball, a light swim, light jog, light run, 
anything that really makes you smile, that's what I want you to do. I want you to get out there. I want you to smile. I want you to loosen up your body, get the blood flow, and get things moving. So, you guys, that in particular is going to be cardio 1.6, okay? Let's talk about the labeling of these workouts, all right? So, this is probably something that's new for a few people. You're going to see workout number 1. Point, well, cardio 1.4, strength 1.3, strength 1.1. What does all this mean? It's overwhelming. What it means is the reason those workouts are labeled is so that you can identify them when you see them again. So, in example... If you do cardio 1.5 and then in three weeks or four weeks you do cardio 1.5 again, you're going to recognize the workout and you're going to be able to hold yourself to the standard that you did it before and see where your growth is or see if you had regression and why. And those are things we can talk about inside of that. But that's the cool thing about repeating some of these key workouts is that you can see the progress throughout things as you do them. Okay. So that is the key to this labeling process. Now let's talk about some other things that are going to start coming in. Um, we're going to start doing a lot of band work here relatively soon. We're going to start really building up our tendons. One question in particular that was asked is we're going to start to do a lot of knees over toes stuff to build our knees. One thing that happens in hockey is our knees get damaged a lot. Um, especially kicking off the bottom of the pool, kicking off the wall, all those different areas. Those are going to hurt your knees if they're not built appropriately. So um, in the up until about five years ago, this has become really mainstream in the past two. But in the past about five years ago, people started pushing their knees over their toes and squats and lunges and different things like that. Reason for that is because there are two different parts of your muscle. There's the muscle belly and there's the muscle uh, tendon. The tendon is on the outside and what actually attaches the bones to the muscle. That tendon is actually stronger than the muscle itself. So whenever you build up a muscle, you tear it, you rip it down, and then it builds back up. Well, you don't do that to your tendons as much. So what we try trying to do with those knees over toes particular movements is we're trying to really strengthen the tendons at the very end range of our movements and then with that one, that's going to make our knees a lot stronger. That's going to protect them more. That's going to also give us a lot more drive in our squats. That's going to make all of our lower extremities drastically stronger because you have to think of the way your knee is designed. Your knee is designed like a piston, a shock absorber. And if we can't use it appropriately and we can only use it to half of its value, it does us only half as good. So that's one movement you guys are going to be seeing, and that's one thing we're going to be focusing on a lot. All right, last little bit for uh, 1.0. One thing you guys are going to start to see is you're going to see plyometric days. We did these before. We're doing them now. Why, you ask? Awesome question. Answer for this one is the big reason we're doing plyometric days is because we're trying to develop our nervous system as well. Um, plyometric days help develop your muscles into a particular way. Um, we have two types of, we actually have two types of muscle fibers, type 1, type 2. Then we have type 2X. These particular muscle fibers transition into different types depending on the demand that we put on them. So they can either be type 1, type 2. Type 2 is very explosive. Type 1 is your long cardio athlete. We are trying to develop these muscles into type 2 muscle fibers because as we know, car hockey is a very explosive, very fast game. Um, and in particular, we have to focus on the fast, bursty sections, all right? Um, hockey, how many times if you guys think in a diff is the difference between you and scoring a goal is the getting a three inches in front of the stick next to you? It's a lot of the battle. That's what these particular movements are going to do. They're going to help you make you a little bit more explosive. Those first three kicks, that jump off the wall, or that turn and kick off the inside wall, that explosive one kick to get outside, that's what we're going to try to develop in these areas. So when you're focusing on these days, focus on being explosive and fast. The word I like to, the, the phrase I like to use for plyometric days is speed, violence, and momentum. Those are the three things you guys are going to be using throughout these. And keep that in mind. So 
in particular on these days there's our these dynamic warm-ups are gonna be included in a YouTube video because I want you to do a particular one for these everything else you're welcome to do what you like then with all this focus on explosion speed 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 all right everything should be fast throughout all of these days so that is your introduction into phase 1.0. If you guys have any questions on that, please feel free to reach out to me. You guys can reach out to me either via the Slack group, email, or text. All right. Thank you, everybody, for coming. We look forward to seeing you around.